Hello fellow crafters, this is Lanvator back on the crafting table for another tutorial, another crafting vid. Today we're gonna be working on facades uh, for uh, for houses, for shops uh, inside a town. So I'm gonna show you my system because uh, I want something very modular and I wanted to reuse uh, the walls I've already uh, made for um, for my castle, uh, walls, uh, multi-purpose uh, walls, and I want to use these uh, as a background uh, for actual houses. I'm going to show you uh, how to make these with schematics. I'm not going to build another one. I've got enough of them for now, uh, but I'm going to show you with uh, very easy uh, schematics how to build those. And then I'm going to show you how to make a medieval uh, shop uh, and entrances uh, such as this one. Okay. So these aren't painted yet. So I'm going to paint all of them uh, at the end. I've got, I've done several of them. I'm going to show you up close with the references, uh, the images I use as references, and um, and then we'll be crafting another one. Let's get to it. For the modular walls, here's my technique. I've used several layers of thick cardboard glued together with hot glue. Then I glue some foam board uh, on top of the cardboard just to make sure to bevel the edges to have some very neat edges. And then of course I just engraved it using uh, the exacto knife and the ballpoint pen technique. Then I rolled some aluminum foil on it and then I just painted using the same color technique I showed you before on the craft. Okay so here you've got the first shop I've made, the first facade and the reference image I use for this. So as you can see the flaps can open to display merchandises. I've made a second one also with two, uh, two flaps, so a bigger shop obviously, you can open them. I'll show you how to make the, uh, the, the flaps, uh, how to make them openable. But I've also made uh, some other pieces. Uh, this one that's probably going to be used mainly uh, for shops or for taverns, so there you go. And I've also made some very simple entrances, uh, two doors, for now. Okay, to start the craft, we're gonna be using some very thin cardboard to do the backing of the craft. It's okay if the cardboard is a little flimsy, because there's gonna be some foam that's gonna be reinforcing the structure, uh, but it's definitely gotta be thin. So here you can see what I'm gonna use as reference uh, for uh, this uh, facade. As you can see, the shop that I'm doing right now is pretty standard, pretty horizontal, so it's gonna be an easy craft. Then we're gonna be using some foam parts uh, just to build up the frame of the shop, all the stonework. I'm removing some parts just to make sure later on I can fit some beams. For the window parts I'm gonna use some aluminum foil, I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna glue it on the piece. Glass windows did exist during the Middle Ages, but often they were made of several rhombuses assembled together to make a window. So I'm gonna use an aluminum foil to mimic uh, the, the glass. It's going to reflect the light and will give the appearance of an old window made of tainted glass. I'm gonna do a base coat of black just to make sure we won't see the back of the cardboard when every piece is glued on top of the craft. And as you can see, I'm gluing the rest of the foam to get the facade. Just make sure you have enough space for your entrance. Okay, this is what I'm going to use to make the beams of the construction. Of course, if you don't have this kind of parts, uh, you could use some very long matches or even make it out of foam. This already had a squared section and I like working with wood if I can. As you can see, I'm using some strong glue, but of course you could be using some wood glue. It would just take a little more time to cure. I just want to be fast, but it can get expensive to use super glue, so... For the foam parts, I really recommend using uh, hot glue, but for the smaller parts, you can use some strong glue. So as you can see, I've added several beams to partition the space 
uh, between the entrance and the different windows. I'm gluing an additional part right there, but it's mainly for decoration. Okay, adding some steps to make a proper entrance. Again, out of foam. My first intention was to make a small window on top of the door, but I figured I wouldn't have enough space, so I've decided to remove the aluminum foil and just make a standard entrance. Now we're gonna be using some coffee stirrers to make the panels of the door. So I'm going to cut pieces to the right size. So I'm gonna trim them and cut them in half, just to have a better scale. Now I'm gonna cut some matches to make small wooden separations between the different uh, windows. I'm gonna use a black pen to make the frames of the windows. During the Middle Ages, the small rhombuses of glass that made the window were often separated and tied together uh, by lead. Now I'm gonna start doing the rhombuses, starting by large triangles. As you can see, I'm often starting uh, from the edges, from the corners uh, of the windows. Now, really, you should do that before because I actually had a hard time doing it uh, inside the belt. So it will be a lot easier using a ruler uh, beforehand before gluing all the beams together. On the other crafts I did, it was a lot easier because the windows were bigger. So yeah, you might consider uh, doing this before gluing all the beams. So I'm still using the stairs and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the flaps. There you go. And I'm trimming them to have an exact fitting. Now we want the flaps to be openable, so we're gonna have to do some hinges. Here you can see I'm using very small beads to do the hinges. And I'm gonna use uh, this metal wire to do the inside of the hinge. Of course, you could use some copper wire if you don't have the small beads. As you can see, I'm gluing one of the beads, I'm just putting it on one corner, always the same. Then I'm gonna cut the wire to the right size. As you can see, I have threaded three beads uh, onto uh, the wire. And I'm gonna stick it inside the bead that has already been glued onto the craft, this way. And at last, what I'm going to do is put a dab of glue just to secure uh, the other bead that is on the extreme opposite of the first one. These two beads are going to be secured onto the craft. The two beads on the middle, on the other hand, have to remain mobile. Here you've got the result. I've been a little sloppy with the glue as you can see, but that's mainly because I wanted everything to be displayable on camera, so I wasn't able to be that precise. Now I'm gonna cut some very small strips out of very thin cardboard. What we're gonna do is the metal bindings that are gonna be binding the different wood panels together and connect them to the hinges. And there you go, I'm gluing it to the panels and to the mobile hinges the two that are in the middle. I'm going to use some small uh, corners of cardboard just to, you know, uh, to make sure that the upper flaps could can remain open. And there you've got the final results. Pretty neat, right?
Okay, now I'm going to uh, score inside the foam just to do the stonework. Afterwards, we're going to be using the ballpoint pen technique just to, um, to enlarge the recesses and give a little more depth to this stonework. And then at last I'm gonna use a bar of aluminum foil just to texture uh, the stones. Last part of the belt, uh, I'm gonna use some thin cardboard and I'm going to glue it underneath just to make a very thin but a very stable base. Something that can be shoved underneath uh, the modular wall I'm using. Now for the color scheme, I'm gonna use uh, the color scheme I've used for all the builds I've made this far. So I'm gonna use a brown base coat, very diluted, just to make sure that uh, the paint goes in every recess of the stonework. Don't put water onto the, the wooden parts or the wood could inflate and the hinges could get loose. So if you want to see the painting technique with more detail, uh, you can watch another video of mine. I'm gonna go really fast on this one. Last thing, we're gonna do the details. We're gonna do the metal parts with uh, gunmetal gray and a slight dry brush of silver. And also we're gonna paint the rhombuses different colors. So here is the final results. I think it looks really good and it has many advantages. First off, it doesn't take any space. So you can store it pretty easily. Also, it's very easily displayable. You can, of course, put some merchandises on top of the displaying flaps. So I hope you liked this tutorial. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you want to see more content. And um, don't forget to comment also, give me feedback. See you later for another episode. Lon Vader signing off.